Hi, I'm Anna Twinney with Reach Out to Horses, and this is Excalibur, my young Mustang colt. Excalibur's life began about two and a half years ago, where he was born at the Spanish Mustang Registry in Oshota, Wyoming. On a 4,000 acre ranch, he had the pleasure to grow up with his family in a large ha family group with about 10 different bands. His father is a lead stallion, his mother is a lead mare, but also plays a dominant role. So you can imagine his bloodline is quite a strong bloodline. Not only that, he has three swirls on his forehead. Excalibur came into my life in February, about um, close to two years ago. During this time, he's lived in Colorado and he spent different times in stalls and pastures. We've done very limited work, a little bit of halter work, intimacy exercises. He's taken a cross country course in hand and we've done a little bit of clicker training. Today, I'd like to show you some of these intimacy exercises, some of the head drops, the neck yielding, some of the single line yielding and a lot more. And all these exercises can help you prepare your young horse for the saddle. One thing that will help horses in general is to massage their ears. If you begin at the base of the ear, just about here, you can massage it in rhythm. At the tip of the ear, there's an acupressure point where you can relieve stress. So this exercise in itself not only prepares young horses, it helps head shy horses. What you're looking for is the horse to be comfortable, to stand in comfort with you, not shake or toss his head, and when he relaxes, just release the pressure by going into a normal rub here. Generally speaking, they begin to enjoy this session and you can touch the ear all over, rub the tip, rub the base. Helps with the head shy horses, it prepares them for clipping. In general, they get the touch if you need to doctor the ears and you want to be able to turn the ear inside out to check what's actually going on in there. Now what you do on one side, with the horses, you always need to do on the other side. So you would rub them here too, getting them to a place by being able to turn the ear inside out. So that they, if they have ear mites or ticks, anything like that, you could actually check inside if you were to clip the ears, that they'd be comfortable with it without rubbing on you to be able to accept the clippers. So he has got accustomed to this, but I just want to show you with a horse that knows how it feels like. Moving on, you can go to the eyes. Underneath the eyes, there's a collection of nerves. It's called a ganglion of nerves. And if you take the pads of your fingers and you just rotate with the hairline, you can instantly see your horse relax. Now, some horses will like this. Some of them won't like it so much. It's a trust building exercise. Now, as you rub the eyes, you can cover them, take away the vision a little bit. As you cover them, you're building the trust too. Not every horse can do it. A Mustang just off the range certainly won't. Some of the primary mares will also um, find it very difficult to have their eyes covered because you're taking away their ability to see into the distance and you're asking them to trust you to do that on their behalf. Now it's fun to look at um, and to see which exercises they like the most. Maybe they, they like the rubbing of the eye. Maybe they prefer the ear. You know you've done a good job. Let's see if he can accept this right now. Once you can put the finger in each ear, just like this. So that's when you know you've done a good job and you can gauge it. It doesn't have to take five minutes. It could take a week, an hour, a month, whatever it takes for you, but that's a good gauge to have. Now, here down at the nose, horses greet each other by breathing together. When you hear the term blow up a horse's nose, what it truly means is breathe with your horse. It doesn't mean go down here and start blowing. What you may find that blowing can be perceived as snorting and snorting is a warning for a horse. So if you blow up a horse's nose, they could actually get very uncomfortable with it or challenged, feel challenged by it. If they put their nose up, let's see if he offers, but if he put their nose up, <laughs> and he says no, they may offer to breathe with you and you could certainly do that. You can also massage the top lip and see he's engaging with it. It's a form of endearment. Actually, he's doing it pretty well right now. 
and it can be a form of mutual grooming if they if you do it at the withers so again if they enjoy it do it if they don't don't but every one of us needs to look in our horse's mouth to do that you take the thumb on one side and the thumb on the other and just lift the mouth up stay away from pulling out the tongue it can do damage to your horse but if you just lift either side of the lip you can clearly look in the mouth and see what's going on now the next stage to that if you put the fingers in the mouth and just massage the top gum in circular motions you can give them a good sensation be careful that top lip is pretty powerful and you can get drawn in between the teeth so you need to know what you're doing having said that the bars on the side of the horse's mouth there's no teeth so you can safely come in the side and just slip your fingers around now you could also massage the tongue many reports many people many students of mine were writing saying my horse sticks his tongue out through the bars and loves for me to massage him we're getting rid of excess hay here so it could be that they enjoy that what it allows you to do is look into your horse's mouth see what his teeth are like see if there's any pressure on the gums massage the gums which is a nice comforting sensation and thereby prepare him for the bit and even prepare him for deworming you may get a horse that says get off my head at this point all you do is rub here at the side when they do the right thing praise them it's called shaping and what you're doing is the same as with the ears you start in an area that they enjoy with rubbing go into a rub release the pressure and you start gradually by just rubbing the mouth and praising him for doing that rubbing the mouth putting your fingers in and praising him for doing that horses learn from the release of pressure so the fact that you stop doing what you're doing will be the key not that you continue find the tries and reward the tries the little tries the key these are all intimacy exercises you can choose which order you wish to place them in there's no specific order and you can run through them in literally less than a minute to discover what your horse finds as comfort and use them for relaxation techniques the same techniques on the ears are used with humans in time of stress or accidents so these are known acupressure points that will help the horse relax benefits of the intimacy exercises includes a chance to get to know your horse's personality and character personal introductions to one another you can learn your horse's likes and dislikes in preparation for medical issues such as ears, eyes and mouth a trust building aid resolve ingrained habits overcome head shy behavior patterns a great tool for bridle and bit preparation helps to habituate to stimulus induces relaxation and is useful for gentling untouched and mistrusting horses ultimately it's a chance to give back now when it comes to the head drops all of us have clipped on underneath here you have the clip all you need to do is ask your horse to lower his head by closing the fingers as he lowers the head praise him release the pressure he's going to find the grass down there i'm going to do it in threes magic number three so you just close your fingers here you don't want any more pressure than as if you're holding a peach or a baby bird that's the amount of pressure now you could use constant pressure to lower the head or you could pulse it your job is to find out if your horse learns from the constant pressure or a pulsing within the pressure each time they lower their head release the pressure and praise them this head drop means that you're taking away the vision the vision for a horse they need to focus by keeping the head up high looking into the distance as i discovered in australia horses can see about a mile and a half away so they need the head up high to see that when you ask a horse to lower their head they focus on something immediately in front of them so lowering the head you're taking away the vision which means you're asking them to trust you enough to do that on their behalf now with some species we've discovered that hierarchy comes when the head's higher cats for, ex for example sit on a fridge to be higher than other cats 
So not only are we doing the vision, the psychology of the horse, we're also lowering the head, getting his eyes to be lower than ours. So we're trust building in numerous ways. Horses are into pressure, so generally speaking, they raise their head up when they find this pressure. So you want to try this exercise in multiple locations on their body. One would be here on the nose. Frisians have high head carriages. It can be a little complicated to get the bridle or the halter on. If you train your horse, when you put the hand here for him to lower his head, you're teaching him to actually lower his head into the halter. All you need to do is place the hand there. As he lowers the head, when he gives an inch or so, you remove the hand. As he lowers the head even more, you remove the hand. Thereby, he learns that he is actually training this hand to leave. He's convinced that if he lowers his head, this hand will go no matter what. So in his mind, he's trained my hand, and yet in our world, we've trained him to lower his head into what becomes the halter. If you put it here, you put the halter here, then he'll feel the pressure from the halter and lower his head, and you've got a great horse wanting to put his head in a halter. The same pressure that you've done in those two locations you want to do here in the pole. Now once upon a time we used to put the two fingers behind the ears massaging the muscles and it would cause the head to drop. I've discovered that if you just put the hand there and you wait patiently, let's see how patient one has to be, just putting the hand there, they will in fact begin to lower the head. As they do that, again just praise them. This left hand can keep his nose straight while the right hand request the head drop. The mere fact that the hand's there, you can see causes pressure. There's a little bit more pressure and they lower the head. Remember to do that in threes. Now Excalibur's being started under saddle. And what that means is I'd love for him to remain as relaxed as he is today. And I can take these methods onto horseback. That would mean when I ask him to lower his head here, and I'm choosing a location on his neck, let me show you there. When I hold that location, I'd like him to lower his head too. As he does that, I would be sitting on horseback with his head lowered, he cannot be nervous. They need their head up high to flee. They need their head up high to see in the distance. The, the natural, um, <laughs> he'll have natural flight instincts when the head's up high. And he may even not be able to reason at that point. So if you put your hand here and you teach your horse to lower his head, it will help you in the saddle with a nervous horse. So these are all little tips for you to take with you. You can either put them all together or you can take them one by one. Now with this neck drop comes the neck yield. For the neck yielding, we position ourselves at the shoulder. It's the safest place to be. As you're at the shoulder, if you put your backside towards the shoulder, you're going to ask him to bring his nose around all the way to this hip bone, the left hip bone. As he does that, you're restricting the vision off the offside. You're asking him to take away that vision. Again, build trust. Trust you enough to bring his head around. Now, the quantity of pressure would be that that we've used before. Literally, really light, gently asking him to yield and look at his hip bone. As gently as he brings his head around is as gently as he needs to take it back. We do this a number of times. And at this point, we're stretching the muscles. We're opening up the vertebrae. And we can feel if he is one-sided or the other, if he's a little stiffer on one side or not. These are all things that you can learn about your horse prior to riding. So, for this side, the same thing. Now, I'm doing it with the pressure on the nose. He's done it before, as you can see. You could do it, I'm gonna clip on this halter here on the ring. You could do it by bringing him around with that lead rope too, because that would go into the saddle when it comes to the reins. Make sure they don't get too bored with it, that you don't labor it too long. But these are the exercises to take onto horseback. That way you're keeping your horse supple before you ride. Advantages to the relaxation exercises. Teach your horse to yield to pressure. Help your horse accept guidance in all directions. Begin the steps to teach self-haltering. 
use as a relaxation aid, build a trust-based partnership. Aids in furthering training. Shape behavior to be taken onto horseback. Encourages soft head carriage and reduces fear. Amazing stretching and toning aid. And in preparation to doctoring and barn management. things are leading up to halter work. You're teaching your horse to come off pressure. At this point, we've done it in the head region. You want to do the same thing with the whole horse. So you can move around, you can skip some of the exercises, but certainly get him ready to yield in multiple locations. One would be that you apply pressure here and you get him to yield on his front end. For that, you want this leg, this left leg, to cross in front of the right leg. This will set him up for his future, for all his ridden work as well. Now you can gently just maneuver the nose. The horse will always follow his nose. So if the nose is pointing that direction, he's going to follow it. If his nose is here and you're pushing, he's less likely to do it or get confused. Just gently push his nose over a little, apply some pressure and ask him to yield. Now you can begin with a few little steps all the way building up to 360 degrees, like that. For example, a little step might mean that you just ask one step and just praise him for it. You keep his head away from you, ask one step, two steps, three steps, release the pressure and reward. This all builds up to the full circle or more, getting him comfortable to yield to pressure while manipulating the feet, which gives you the leadership role, and taking care of his body at this point. It may take you a few days to do that, it may take you longer, shorter, just depends on the intelligence of the horse, as well as the environment in which he's been brought up in, and also his breed. So X has practiced this a little bit before. When it comes to the hind end yielding, there's specific body language to take into consideration. That would mean that we've already brought his nose around, he knows that. He's yielded here, so we're gonna bring his nose around a little bit to follow. We're going to look at this foot here, the right hind, so the eyes are on there. My hips will be towards his hips, my shoulders at his hip bone. The body language is gonna ask him to yield. And we want this foot crossing in front of the other, stepping out while the foot is in the air. Let me show you that again. Shoulders are towards his hips. Hips will be towards his hips. A slight bend here, looking at the foot, asking for him to yield, stepping out as the foot's in midair. That releases the pressure and reinforces what he needs to know. Do it again so you can see one more time. Here's the foot yielding, eyes are down, shoulders are square, and stepping out to praise him. This will get him ready. Even if you're not thinking of riding at this point, it will help him go through gates, in and out of stalls, in the wash rack, and generally asking him to yield his hind end for you to get in and out of things safely. Now you could extend this a little bit where you apply pressure where the leg would be. So you, you have the same positioning here, ask him to yield while applying pressure when he slows down, you just apply the pressure when he's moving, you take the finger off. This prepares him to yield to the pressure. This pressure you could do on the hips too. See how he does. So that he learns that if he's crowding you, when he feels that pressure, he would yield to your touch. All things for horses from a young age. You could start from the moment they hit the ground, teaching them to yield. Five months old when you're weaning. If you've got a yearling, these exercises are great for that. Hints and tips. Your eyes direct your horse's feet. 
Position your shoulders at a 45 degree angle to your horse to drive him. The heart chakra directs energy to a specific area. Take note to where it's pointing. Make small incremental steps, building up to full circles. Watch your horse's inside leg step in front of the outside leg. No shuffling. Retreat while your horse's inside foot is in mid-air to reward footfall. Apply only as much pressure as needed to get the desired response. Remember horses learn from the release of pressure. Use multiple rewards, release of pressure, rubs, your voice and rest. Visualize, energize, use body language and then finally apply the line aid. Now you have begun the steps for the one rain stop. I'd love to move on to single line yielding at this point. And I found a single line yielding to be exceedingly beneficial for many, many things. We're going to show you how to do it. And the line control is one of the keys here. If you're not familiar with lines, get yourself comfortable with the lines because they can be exceedingly dangerous. Make sure that the coils you have are a certain length, like that one. And then make sure that the coils could leave should your horse bolt. Because if it's the other way around, you get them strapped around your fingers and it could be exceedingly dangerous. So the coils are important. At this point, you just put the line over your horse's head. If you have a horse that's head shy, this helps them to get comfortable with it. Also helps a horse that you're preparing for bridling because you're showing that the bridle and the bridle will come here, but more importantly, the reins will come over the ears. So there's multiple reasons to this piece. If the horse is a little spooky, at this point, you're desensitizing them to the line. If they're comfortable with it, you'll be asking them to yield. So the positioning, therefore, will be shoulders square towards the horses, back here, eyes on your horse's eyes, and out of the kick zone as he comes around. You ask your horse to yield right, this way he learns right, putting your eyes on eyes, <laughs> holding that pressure, and he will release himself naturally from it, asking him to come and face you and praising him. He makes it look exceedingly simple. With a wild untouched horse, this may take a week because first off, you're getting them comfortable with ropes or lines themselves. And the mere fact that you're desensitizing and you're throwing the rope left and right and back and forward might take a little bit of time. You wanna stay in position? And as you do this piece now, you're asking him to feel the pressure. Maybe you won't use your eyes or your shoulders and it's pressure alone that he needs to learn to follow. As he follows it, he gets that instant relief. And additionally, he gets to be with you and you can praise him. When your horse starts to predict what you're doing, maybe change the scene a little bit. You do want flow in there, but consistency can become an issue if they start to run forward. In cases like these, you just hold the halter and ask them to stand. You step back and away, and you begin to ask him to yield. With a bolting horse, a horse that you release in the field that runs off prior to you releasing, that you have issues with, this is an awesome exercise. Because as they begin to leave, they will hit the end of the line. A 50 foot round pen is ideal, these lines are 30 feet, so they can go no more than the line. You've always got them on the line, which is a great thing. So they're always safe and so are you. But for example, you were to about to take this halter off, you would have the halter on underneath with maybe a dually over the top. In fact, it would be the dually underneath, you take your other halter off, so the dually would still be on your horse. And as you flick the line, he's under the impression that he would be leaving and you're teaching him to yield to the pressure. And he'd come back and he'd find no value in leaving because he would hit the end of the line. So there's multiple things that you're teaching a horse here. What you do on one side, be sure to do on the other side, which means just stepping around here safely, flicking the line over their nose, getting them comfortable so they can transfer that information. Again, be comfortable yourself. Make sure that the coils are correct. Flick them over here. And before he gets distracted, 
just generally ask him to yield. Now, if you were to use the dually halter and be clicked on, make sure you're not giving conflicting messages and you're on the right, correct side of the halter. This would mean if I'm on this side, you'd need the ring to be clipped on this side to bring his head around. If I'm standing over here and I wish for him to yield, in fact, if you were to choose the dually at this point, you would be on that off side so that he's going left. Otherwise, you could have a conflict there where the ring's unclear. See that? It's on the other side that you normally be on, bringing him to you. That way he learns to seek you out. He learns the left and right. He learns the reward of being with you. Hidden lessons for your horse in single line yielding. She learns to yield left and right. Follow line guidance. Stand and be patient. Becomes desensitized to objects on her side. Bridle. Overcome head shy behavior. Gains body awareness. Accept restriction. Decreases bolting. Can build confidence. Discover leadership and trust. In preparation to start young horses under saddle. And one can either incorporate, exclude, or gradually eliminate body language. I feel that at this point you've set your horse up for success and he's ready to learn the halter. Please bear in mind that Excalibur does know the halter already and I'm showing you with a finished horse. Still young, at 28 months, he's going to get his first saddle pretty soon, but he does know the halter well. A little mouthy on times. So, for this piece, you've taught your head, you've taught your head, you've taught your horse to lower his head at this point, and you ask for a slight head drop before stepping in. Use your body language, shoulders are square, eyes are looking where you want him to go on a target, and you proceed forward and then you apply the pressure. One foot at a time. You release the pressure, bringing his nose around. It releases itself, but you can release and reward. To back up the lines a little shorter, and you release and reward. For him to back up, the line goes about here, you're aiming for the point of shoulder. That way you get the nose down, point of shoulder, and he has a good head carriage. You want a little fluidity so that you begin to get a rocking horse motion. This also allows you to teach him the halter, so the pressure. He's coming off the pressure. He learns to back up smoothly, which he needs to do, and not be evasive and he learns to come forward off of pressure while respecting space. So there's multiple reasons for this. Often people will say that their horse leads and yet the horse will be bulking or resistant. You really want to get them offering as much as possible. There. Every step of the way you are rewarding them. So this means the pressure's applied when the foot's on the ground. When the foot comes up, you release the pressure. <laughs> the line's here to aid you so that you begin to get him listening better and better. If they rub a neck like he does sometimes, that means he pushes his nose this way, your hand goes the other way in the opposite direction. So you ask him to back. If he rubber necks, Let's see if he can do that. Uh, he's not now. You would put your hand to the left side so that you're schooling him saying, do not push me. The hand is much like canoeing in a way. The hand generally goes to this shoulder, but if you need to move his hips, you'd bring the hand out and he move his hips like this, the hands out. If you want him to go back, you aim for the point of shoulder. If he rubber necks, you put the hand over. 
and you ask him to listen. What you're in fact doing is mirroring what he's bringing to the table. If he's soft and kind, you're soft. If he's beginning to be a little obnoxious, like rubbernecking here, you mirror that. You say that's unacceptable and stop pushing me. And then you ask him forward. All along, praising the tries. Now on the space, when he pushes, ask him to step back. He needs not crowd. So he shouldn't crowd you. The space you decide on. Maybe you say, this is perfect. There's enough space here. He can move his head left and right and I don't get headbutted. Maybe you say you know your horse well enough that you allow him here. And that's a little closer. Make that decision and be consistent in the decision so that they understand what to do. You want to keep the focus. The halter helps you keep the focus and attention. While they're with you, it's a herd of two, not a herd of others. There you go. Once we get him softer, and for the most part, it's pretty soft now, and he's listening to the body language too, then you can move on to the next area. People find it a little bit difficult to understand the next piece. What we do is create a distance between our horse and ourselves. From that distance, you're asking your horse to come off of pressure. He's learning to seek you out. Maybe there will be three, six, nine, 12 feet between the two of you, and he's learning to come off pressure by himself. You're no longer in this vicinity, you're a distance away. He needs to learn to come off pressure by himself for when he would be tied. If you're not there and he gets spooked and he feels the pressure, chances are he'll sit back, pull back, rear, or get hurt. If he learns to feel the pressure, which is innate for him to raise his head up to, and he learns to come off of it, come forward, you're helping him out in the long run. This also helps with leading, for then he will feel the pressure and he stay with you in different gates or different speeds. So if you speed up, he speed up. If you slow down, he slow down. And he understand the specific use of what this means when I feel pressure. So the distance is exceedingly important for those reasons. And also with an obstacle course, for example, water, trailer loading, all of the above, you'd be at a greater distance. He needs to know what to do on his own. So let's look at that for a moment. To begin with, you may step back a few feet. There's three rules to it. You step back, you stop, and you apply pressure. Here it is. You step back, you stop, then you apply the pressure. The quantity of pressure you require is that that he thinks he needs to jog. So you step back, you stop, you apply the pressure. His job at this point is to stay with you. Step back, you stop, you apply the pressure. He seeks you out all the way. The quantity of pressure you use will vary. You start on a one going all the way up to a 10. You stop when you get the desired response. The pressure is like milking the line, not a pull, more like a milk. So as I step back, I stop and I apply the pressure. Boy. He learns the spatial boundary. He learns to seek you out and he learns to respond. If he comes a little too far, just back him up. Good boy. Prepare to release the line, step back, apply the pressure, praise him. Despite if it's gotten different, praise him for the try. Step back and it's the try that he appreciates. So now he's beginning to stay with me and pay attention to my presence. He's getting ready now. There we go. So at this point you may go into leading. Lead with a foot in your line, just like this where his nose is at your shoulder. It's a safe place for him to be. If he creeps forward, not paying attention, 
Back him up a little. Place him in this window of opportunity. If he fails, you school him. If he's in the right place, you praise him. But he learns that this is his place to be. With a stud or a colt, you may want to be a little further back. They can often be light on their feet. And you want to make sure you don't wear the hoof on your shoulder. So keep him at nose to shoulder. Ask him to stay with you. You can put your finger, your thumb, in your pants, in your jeans, asking him to catch up. If he doesn't, he hits that line momentarily, so he learns where to be. Not everybody needs to do that, you just have the line here. Now, we should be able to walk normally. This is about normal. This is probably about here's Excalibur's gate today. And we can slow it down to where we're truly meandering, picking it up to where we're walking, slowing down for the meander, picking it up for where we're going quicker. So that now he stays with you. You can look over your right shoulder to keep him in your peripheral vision. School him to remind him. Pick up the speed a little bit. Go into the jog. Lengthen the line as you do that. And then you're jogging light on your front feet. Now to prepare him to slow down, straighten the body, drop the hips, and he'd go into a walk or a stop. Back. There. Let's look at that a moment. Again, so walk, give him a chance. Pick up your walk a little sometimes. He gets to see it. To jog, I go forward, light on my feet, and he's right here. You can pick the jog up, slow it down, put the weight in your hips, and you have a horse staying with you pretty well. If at any time you got spooked, build in the previous exercises. You just gently ask him to lower that head and get him to relax. So there's no formula here. There's a little bit of structure to help you. All the exercises have their place. What it will create is a horse that's comfortable to be around you, a horse that wants to be with you, a horse that respects you and sees you as that leader. Now you're creating that team of two. It's common to run into challenges at first when trying to incorporate new skills into your horsemanship. Join me as we meet some Roth students as they learn the methods of gentle horsemanship. Jennifer and Logan have been teamed up to explore the intimacy exercises. As Jennifer begins to massage Logan's nose, he signals his disapproval by shaking her hand away. We want Logan to want to experience this massage, and so we take our time to prove to him our intentions are good and for his benefit. Now watch as Jennifer asks less and goes a bit slower, at a pace he can accept and enjoy. She then praises Logan's tries by removing her hand before any display of resistance. She removes the pressure, speaks to him in a soothing voice, and rubs his neck as a gesture of appreciation. So you praise the try. Well done, Jennifer. There is much to think about with single line yielding. And as we cannot think faster than our horse can react, we need to ensure that safety remains our number one priority. It's always a good idea to prepare for as many eventualities as you can think of and to visualize the outcome we wish to experience. Finally, take time to place your line in the correct position so that if your horse bolts or gets spooked, you do not end up tangled in those coils. Call the rope like an accordion so the last coil in becomes the first coil to leave your hand. If you're working with a dually halter, you have three clips available to you. Ideally, for gentle horses, clip on the ring underneath. If you are somewhat concerned, or you do not have the good fortune of knowing the individual horse that well, clip on the side ring, the training ring. Always choose the ring farthest from you, as this will guide your horse correctly and not give mixed signals, as you see Logan initially experienced. Logan has to figure out to which side the pressure is applied and yield accordingly.
Bindi appears very calm, her demeanour comes across as relaxed, and yet one cannot take it for granted that she will remain that way. Prepare and read your horse's every move. The quantity of pressure you apply to direct your horse is crucial. The lighter the touch, the lighter the horse. If you hang on to them trying to prevent an incident, accident, harm or damage, you often do just the opposite, as you confirm to your companion that they are indeed restricted which in turn brings up fear, flight, fight or freeze. Staying calm yourself and applying only as much pressure as you need while directing them softly will often keep you out of trouble. All too often people will sit down on that line, causing their horse's adrenaline to rise and go into pressure, or worse, flip over backwards. You can make it easier on your horse by positioning yourself in the driving zone, which is located behind the horse's girth and signals to your horse to move away from you. When positioning yourself in this zone, use eye contact with your horse and a 45 degree shoulder angle towards your horse's shoulders to give clear nonverbal guidance. During Elaine's first try teaching Bindi to follow the line, she inadvertently stood in the blocking zone, an area that will cause a horse to be drawn to you. Stop, stand, back or feel challenged. As our horses move, we can easily be placed in that zone, so it's up to us to keep our position. As our horses gain confidence, we can gradually eliminate the nonverbal gestures and replace them solely with direct cues. If you run back while applying pressure, then you create a pulling action where there's no immediate release for your horse to learn from. In effect, you will teach your horse to walk and be dragged along. Remember, step one, back up to create distance between you and your horse. Step two, stand still. Step three, apply gradual pressure to ask for forward motion. So you've got to be able to doctor them. So partially massaging the ear means that we massage and we look and we praise. We massage and we look. We, we only follow her, we don't force. Good girl, you're all right. Yeah, you're okay. So if you're standing there and you do this, she knock you. Okay. But if you're standing here, what, move her to the side. See, now there, is able to turn it a little. Good girl. Yeah, I'm just going to hold it. It's okay. Good girl. No, oh, good girl. There, good girl. So this is the shaping. We're getting to the point where we can hold the ear. Good girl. Then up. Now hopefully, there, bend the tip. There, good girl. No, stand. Um, so you'll take the neck and get a neck bend because you've done the neck bends, right? Okay. Shoulders. Yeah, so shoulders to here. There. Get, get her to yield there. But the shoulders and the hips three times and then step out. Thank you, Zena. Good girl. Because you need a bit more of a read before you put the line okay. over her butt, basically. Okay. So hips and shoulders, neck. Make sure she doesn't shuffle. So there's one, she shuffled. Three, step out. So these exercises could take five, 10 minutes. They're great exercises to do prior to mounting. You get to learn the personality, character of your horse. You're truly beginning to bond prior. You're reading how they feel on the day. So all these things really would allow you to see if the horse wants you to mount. See, riding truly is an invitation. And it's not until now that you'd know if you're invited on. If you haven't got all this down, maybe the invitation doesn't exist. So it's kind of fun to build them in. You wouldn't have to do everything every day. You might say, you know what, I just spent two minutes here going to rub, ask him to yield a little, maybe drop his head and he's all good. All right, we say, that, that's enough for today. Let me put the saddle on and we're good to go. So you make up your mind as to how much you need to do, depending on how willing and how comfortable they seem. All right. If your horses move, because they've got the, the door in their blind area, just ask them to stand. If he tilts his head, he's keeping an eye on the people behind him. 
and so he might find that a little more challenging. I'd like him to be able to focus on me, so I just asked him to keep his head up and keep his focus forward. You praise them as you invite them into your heart space. Good boy. Taking your shoulder by, stand square in front of your horse. This way you're introducing them to the language of Equus, if you've never met them before. You're creating the personal space. You begin to back them up. He's on the normal halter underneath here, not so much on the training halter. And you're learning their likes and dislikes. So what he likes on praise, how much praise and for how long. And then asking him to stand. Taking the shoulder by again. So he's being shown north, south, east and west in here. I'm asking for him to stand pretty straight so that he's focusing entirely on me at that time and getting his attention back. So it's a good time to get attention. Taking the shoulder by again, standing square. There we go. It's new, isn't it? Good boy. In a fashion, we have the walk in a moment. Bring the eyes back to get the walk. Eyes on eyes for forward motion. Good boy. That was nice. Eyes back on the hind feet to get the walk. Eyes on eye to maintain the walk. Good boy. There, we're better now. Here's a plastic bag. Yeah. That's better too. Okay. Now ask him to walk again. The eyes keeping forward motion. Good boy. Let him relax at the walk. There's your licking and chewing again. Some plenty of that. No. He says that's it then. Vulnerable areas. Up where the cats go here. Down where the dogs go. What you're testing is to see what he feels comfortable with, what's uncomfortable. Both hands are on your horses, both hands massaging. What do they like, dislike, pain, discomfort, a bunch of things you're looking for. Head up. Then for the feet, you're taking away the flight. You're asking him to give up one foot at a time. Good boy. His form of defense. Lexi. The way you're using the hand is to put one on the hip bone and the other picks up the foot. It's the safest way right now. He's learning to yield to pressure and he's, his flight's being taken away. So you'll see for him it's a matter of reminding him when he gets bored like that, you have to change the story. And Excalibur thinks he knows a lot. So you're trying to work with him in a fairly quick speed here. There we go. So if I can keep his mind occupied, we might do okay. Good boy. This also gets him prepared for the bridling because you're putting it over the ears if you have a head shy horse, which he's not. There, he begins to anticipate and yield with minor pressure. It's pretty light. Gonna build one more in. Good boy. Where we go the other way because I'm wanting him to figure out sooner how to yield and have feel it. Good job. So there's your left and right. Very important when it comes to the ground driving. Now you can use the flag, two reasons. One, to create forward motion and quite the opposite to desensitize. He has had it on his body before. And what you want to do is paint your horse with the flag as if you're putting paint on him and covering every area. A little licking and chewing can be praised. 
what you do on one side, do on the other. And because we haven't done this for at least eight months, I can just refresh his memory that this feels okay. So we've done the left and the right side, covering his body, good boy, in a normal motion. Now you would want to also desensitize them where you're using a light motion. We're gonna cover this, good boy. And I'm just running through as a reminder for him, the light motion, just to see how he is today and to prepare him. His nose needs to be straight despite the fact that he's really good with this. He can be involved, but he can't have his nose there. And then, very briefly, we're gonna cover the left and the right eye. Now you could start off at this distance if the horse is nervous. If he's not, like him, we've done a good job. Good boy. Not that worried, but it gives me a read of who he is today and it gives you an idea of what work we've done in the past to prepare him for the day. What you're doing when they're free is you're getting the read of what he feels about the tack. So I can guide him there and you're reading. Now if they're nervous, if they're pouring, snorting, something may have happened. If he's investigating, it's okay. He's happy with it. If he loses interest, I'll ask him to follow me again, or if he starts chewing on it, he's lost interest. So, we come back here, big guy, and we're gonna investigate this saddle closely into the blind area, like that, and you see how he did it nicely? He didn't um, scoot, and back the other way. Now, he's comfortable with the halter, he's had it on before, so I didn't need to school him to that. If he wasn't comfortable with this tack, you take a little time with it. Bet you're on the schooling ring, bud. And not every horse would you move this quickly. I'm going with the fact that if I move quickly, I might actually keep his his attention for a little while instead of him getting distracted every two minutes thinking that he knows what he's doing. So this particular saddle is a racing saddle, it's a training saddle for racing and I take this around the world with me because it fits most horses. So far it's fit, fitted the sheddies all the way up. The first cinching is the most important because if they were to do anything, you need to get that nice and tight. So this is the first time he's had anything around his belly. He needs to stand despite how bored he gets. So that I can cinch this thing up. There. Step back and away out of the kick zone because you never know when he feels it. Eyes are on eyes, shoulders are square. Yeah, this is a first time that he's gonna have a bit. He's never had one in. Saved it all for you. So what you'll see is him responding to this because he's never had anything like that in his mouth before. There. So it'd be a little confusing for him. Now my plan is not for him to be ridden with a bit, but I'd like him to get comfortable with it and this is a good opportunity for him to do just that. So this is the mouthing process. You can do that at home in a stool and start with 10 minutes and increase it. Oh boy. Now 
So the, the leather strap that you're seeing is one to keep the stirrup irons together so that we get a natural leg position here on it. it means this, the leather will keep the stirrup irons together and not swing out. Good boy. Particularly gentle fella. We're going to long line off of the dually, which it's good for. And ultimately he may be ridden off of that or off of a side pull. Now he's never been long lined either and it may help me to get some impulsion. That I've been lacking. There. <clears throat> now everything X does, he learns quickly. So I have to bear that in mind today so I don't bore him with the long lines. There. So although you saw the saddling, we struggled to get a little impulsion, this will help me. And I've got the walk trot canter with the saddle on now. Let the lines go through your fingers. So he's never restricted. If I get forward, I need to praise it. Especially as he's so quiet, you need to praise when he gives the attempt. Yeah. Okay. Create some space up here. His nose left and right from the single line. Nice turn, actually. Lost in portion on my turn, though. And both directions. Use the inside line to create the motion. Or the outside line here. You see which one's more effective. I'm going to put about five to seven turns on him. You hold on to this nice leather strap, even if you think you're okay. Don't do anything. I want him to feel it on his own. I can just encourage him to move left and right here. Good boy. And then they freeze. Yeah, that'll be me. Now encourage him forward. Sometimes they freeze and you want to be careful. A colleague of mine just did this the other day and kept with the stimulus that it went into a beautiful buck. So we want to encourage slowly. As soon as you see him take a step, he'd be into pressure. So he feels the legs and he thinks he needs to stand and then let him just move. Good, like a wobbly jello. And you take anything they give, don't encourage it because it's the first movement he's had on his back. Despite the fact that he's good with the saddle, you still allow him to give what he offers. So he's learning the left and right from the rider with a little aid from the bottom. There. A little more, Rob. X, good boy. I'm gonna stop him here. I think that's good. Oh, good boy. And then we back up. We always finish with the backing. It separates the sentences from the paragraphs. Good boy. Which means that he knows that we're finishing just there or going into something new. There we go. I'm, I'm fine. If the horse isn't fine, you get somebody to clip on there and they can help you off. If they're fine, you can just get, get him to stand. It's important to still have that contact like we have and for him to pay attention. If you need to, you can just move around the saddle a little bit so you can feel the weight and then you can get off. There, good boy. And then the untacking is as important as the tacking. connected. So, I'm going to still introduce him to the tack. 
Remember we introduced them to the tack out of both eyes. And you want him to be comfortable with the tack, so I like him to investigate, but ultimately I'd like him to be with me. So that little gesture you saw there, drew him off the tack, I'm putting the tack in the blind area, we're fine, he's pretty happy. If we can, we do a left hand turn. And you see how he's not scooting the hind end with the tack in the back. Way I know my work yesterday was good. You judge your work by how the horse reacts the next day because of the latent learning, anything that they've done overnight. Good boy. So some of the stages you'll even see on him being skipped now. So yesterday you saw a lot more. He was round penned. Good boy. Use the flagging a little bit, the single line yielding. He kind of graduated from all of that. And so now we just start with the saddling. Just as gently as you would on the first day, moving through oil so that all your movements are smooth, but maybe smooth and a little different than before, because he's got to get used to it. He's got to get used to the real way of moving here. Hey ho, hey ho. If I pick up the girth with the right hand, that means that I'm looking at his face at the time. I can keep an eye on the hind feet also. And then you put this first strap on, remember, as smoothly as you can, keeping the head up high. <laughs> so your little backward step. So you just note that in your mind's eye. There he's getting bored, head up though. He needs to pay attention despite him thinking he knows all of this. Yes. He's going you so slow, Anna. So this behavior, you ignore, and I'll do exactly what I told you guys. If he reacted a little there, and he did, I'll just let him go. Excuse me, ladies. <laughs> there you go. Let's create that forward motion. Forward's good, Dex. There you go. So remember, because of, because of the level of energy I had yesterday, we can make it short. All I'm reading is, is he comfortable with this? If I felt he was and I do what I do on one side on the other. So I've got the walk trot canter and attention. And very brief. All my job is there to see is, is he comfortable? He says, I can't walk with the girth, but you can. So often when they stop, they think they can't walk with the girth. So I'm gonna encourage that forward motion. This time you saw the arc a little further away because I want him to come forward, boy. So now we can adjust the saddle, good man, put the stirrups down, you're okay, untrack him because the girth's been tightened, so because I want to keep him nice and soft I've got him on the side pull, there, and today we do more of the long lining as you saw, Earlier we go straight to the saddle and the long lining and we do a few different things with him today that he learns all these cues before the ride is up there. So the body plat language is in place. Shoulders are square towards his, eyes are on eyes. Forward motion here, hips are moving. 
He's got better forward motion today, so that's a good thing. And so it means we freed him up a little bit. He's listening to the line, you can see that. Ears locked on, he's concentrating, and he's mouthing, so he's figuring out where the bit should fit and how it feels to him. Now, if I close these fingers on the outside, see how light that is? It come to the walk. I could just use body language, but I want him to learn more and more of the legs so the line will represent forward motion. This is how you begin to create the cues onto horseback that he learns that's your forward motion. Good boy. Good boy. So the flick you're seeing is a roll of the wrist that way. It's clockwise. Good boy. Okay, when I cue the inside line, the body language will keep him going. Change of direction, lines on the inside. And I can create the cues as subtle as I wish. The eyes still do remain on his eyes and the body language is encouraging the forward motion. I'm gonna go up higher here. just for him to feel the saddle and the lines. And you'll see I let them go through my fingers so I don't interfere with forward motion. There, just like that you let them glide. Good boy. Slow him down to the walk. Pretty neat. Did you do that one by one? The line, left line. So the outside line. Now you can also see when I raise that left hand, he goes forward a little. If you keep your hands at the midriff, you can use them for forward motion. See so up here is quicker, down here is slower. If you keep your hands up here, you'll desensitize him. There. It will be the positioning of your body. So this is getting bigger. Yep. This is getting smaller. So if I get bigger, I expect a reaction. If I get smaller, he'll slow down. I'll acknowledge with the head drop, you'll see me nod the head a little when he does something nice. Bring him in through the center, forward motion. Good boy. Making the circle a little smaller. Same thing again, circle smaller. Keeping him going, good boy. Forward. So when he's doing the right thing, you stay out of his way. That's forward motion. Good boy. Less body language, because I need him to listen to the lines, the hands. If I were to step out in front of his nose all the time, he won't hear the hands. Smaller circle. Going to go for forward motion while going to the loo today. There. And reward him for his tries by letting him relax. Going through the centre, good boy. You see that's easier for him today doing some figure of eight. See the sensitivity now? A lot better. Good boy. 
smaller circles. This can drive the hocks out a little to get the bend. Very nice for a two-year-old. Keeping the size of the circle there, increasing with a slight bend in his body. The hips are pushing the shoulders out just there a little. And you can see his tongue exploring. Going through the center and he knows what we're gonna do. We're gonna stop in the middle. And you'll see that became a lot easier than it was yesterday. So that's the latent learning, the overnight learning. Today, we're gonna back a little, but not finish the session. Yesterday it meant that we finished. Today it means we're just gonna pause, pause and breathe. Boy, actually, forward motion. I'm in the blind zone right now, but I'm gonna go for forward so that he feels the line again a little. Pushing him out of that circle with this hand. Oops, I was gonna show you guys and I did. A bit dramatic. So now we keep the feet moving, sinking walk with the feet moving. I'm not gonna to touch the reins. There you go, hopefully you could see that forward motion, a little more than thinking it with him. So now we're going to use the eyes, forward motion, eyes back here, to ask for the walk, same thing, good boy. Up to the trot, this time the line, eyes are on eyes, just the left line, and there's your stop. So there's three different ways to slow him down, all effective need to choose which one you're doing. They all have different reasons. Sexy. Nice turn here, forward motion. That's how it should look. There's the impulsion in the rear. Good job. Nice turn, forward motion. And we're slowing down. Good man. Back in the middle. You can do it. Hold. Hold. Good boy. That was a good workout, huh? That was good. So now I'm practicing just bringing his nose around with the rain itself. Remember, we've done the nose. I'm going for rain. Just a little practice, because then it will help him when I'm on there. So now you're also seeing all that you did. This will get the flexibility, the trust, and standing, good boy. Okay. Let's should we put this over your nose? Maybe that's a little better, right? <laughs> there, we're gonna go yield a little here. Good boy. There, good boy. Come forward. Lexi, come forward. There. Oh. Good boy. Okay, so we've got the neck yielding, the neck drops, we've got the yielding. We could even just get him to yield a little. This way all intact. Nice job. Head up a little though. Very relaxed here, bud. Yeah, head up it. It is. Yeah. Good boy. 
So then, if you felt like you needed to do a little more if you hadn't done it, and if he was concerned, you just play with those stirrup irons a little, he's actually fine. Oh, that made a noise, huh? Yeah, it's all good though. Little big guy, you shouldn't have to hold him today. Good boy, oops, that's different. Good boy, let's put the weight in that stirrup today. Had a boy. Head up. Head up. Okay. Let's see if I can get him just to move off. <laughs> Make it his idea, right? So he knows the left or right yielding. Oh, there we go. He's going to go, I know this. Can you do it this way? Just this way? That a boy. Look at you. Well done. Okay, forward now. Hold on, Rob. There. Thanks. Good boy. Yeah, Rob's not going to help you. Just encourage the forward motion for me a little. Good boy. Good boy. Good boy. That's the first trot. Good man. And you can see one of the reasons why you're holding on to this, this little strap. One is if he were to buck or anything like that, but two is once you get that forward motion, you stay off his head and you just say any forward's good. And so if you were to balance off that rein and you've seen how light he is, you're, you're giving him conflicting messages if you were to pull him in any way. So the head's very natural. There's no contact on those reins. And he's just learning forward motion. And you don't post on the first day because it confuses them. So now I'm looking for more than one lap. You could smile, Excalibur. Got his ears pinned. Sometimes they have the ears back when they're listening to what's happening behind them. So in an ideal world, I'd like his ears to come forward um, like that. So I know he's a little happier and he's not concentrating entirely on me. But the fact that he swished the tail and had his ears back kind of showed a little bit of unhappiness. So I'd love for him to be a little happier with my presence up here. Ooh. And then you do that kind of stuff. <laughs> Build in touching his backside, maybe not quite that early. <laughs> Good boy. If we go forward. Here's the body language on horseback. You're getting bigger from above. He knows that. And you're seeing him a little more responsive. Oh, 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 good boy. Just going to let him pause here for a minute. So how much are you doing? Exactly. Good job. Not much. Good job, little man. Huh? Okay. No, that's, that's Excalibur saying, if I back, we finish, don't we? 
So when you give them a voice, they go, let's back up. It's all done. I've done well. Let me sigh and show you. We go, forward's a really good thing, X. And this is where he go, no, but let's think about finishing, Anna. And I say, no, we don't finish on every stop. Sometimes we go forward a little longer. This is where we have our little first discussion. There. I'm going to go the other way. Sorry, I should have told you. You can encourage that forward motion there. There. Good boy. Good boy, you're okay. Good boy. You're okay. Good boy. Keep going. Good boy, thank you. It's good. Okay, Brack, we're actually good, so I'll wait for you. Um, maybe just play a little more. Good boy. So, yesterday we had the mounting and the walk, today we have the trot. And today we have him listening to the rider a little more. See if he lower his head from up here. Can you do that? Ah, boy. That's the head drop you guys were teaching. Okay, we were supposed to go the other way. <laughs> He's going, I'll, I'll leave. <laughs> Excalibur, you're meant to be following him. He's a natural born leader. <laughs> What's the famous phrase? I'm the leader, Where's my, where are my students? <laughs> Now let's follow the, the buddy system here. Okay, we're, we're definitely liking to be in front. Yeah. <laughs> no, doesn't need to be babied. This way he gets used to horses around him. Good job, Exy. Keep going, keep trotting. <laughs> we're here. Get schooled, good boy, keep going. He respects the tail, did you guys see that? Keep going, you've got to be in front of me. So you've got to make sure you're always in front. Oh, you don't need to school X. Keep going. Make sure you're out in front. No bucking. Good. Good boy. You're okay, his tail's not in your face. I know, he keeps on poking you. That's good, bring him on down a little. Oh, good boy. That was a good hole. Yeah. That's a good movement. Okay, ready? Up to the trot. Good boy, X. Yeah, I know. You're okay. Good job. Okay, ready to go through the middle. I'll follow. Turn left. Good. Ooh. Got schooled. Brack was a world champion, what is it, cutting horse? Cutting horse rider. So you should be able to sit this. You're okay, no cutting in. Look, my, my colt's intelligent. <laughs> he cuts in, I'm done with this. Come on, keep going, you gotta go this way. with the pony horse. Got like 10, one minute left. 
And we're finished. Your good respect. Nice one. Well, we can turn. So you can see you've got to be assisted a little bit. Not the most difficult thing. So we keep going your way. I'm just letting you know he turned because he got the tail in his face. Just going to start off to make it my idea that we finish. I'm going to go left, Brack. Yeah. Don't need to be close to the appy, don't worry. There. Get one, one lap. Go forward, Brack. You're okay, X. You're okay. And that's good. There. Thank you. Oh, good boy. Wicked. Yeah. Good man, you respected the appy. Huh? Yeah. Did he tell you that? Oh, yeah. Come on forward. Thank you. So there's your forward motion coming. Thank you, Rob. We, yeah, untack him and you can untack him with me. You can take the saddle and I'll just put this on, on here while you untack him. Then he gets two people untacking. Nice. And he learns that bit. Good job. Thank you. I'll keep this because I'll bring him out with it later. And the mountain block there? No, yeah. Yeah, just so it's easier for you right now. Because he's going to wander over there with you. That's his second day. So what improvements did you guys see? Bow. No, that's close. Bow. Bow. That's very close. Oh, that's good. And then, um, then Excalibur does his own thing. Right, Exy? Good boy. Stay there. Stay there. Good boy. Good boy. There. But we do the bowing and the lying down. And I'd like to say I was good at this, but my horse kind of volunteers a lot of things. So, good boy. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Nice. He's probably gonna say, hey, I'll just stay, have a nap. Oops. Okay, do you wanna roll now? You wanna roll? Not so much. Is that it? <laughs> He's going to sleep. He's <laughs> shutting his eyes. <laughs> now we roll. All the way over. Okay, can we get up now? All right. Good boy. Thank you. Very good. Very good. That's a good boy. Yes, did you like that? Okay, good. What you can see is that it's very stress-free. So the training methods are stress-free even when it comes to lying down which I think is always remarkable.